going on guys? So, exciting day here. We've got new Jalan 2 RC four wheel drive. They've got the same Jalan 2 chassis, but we've got a new updated Land Rover body. Um, I've had a couple of these in the past. I had a D90. I'll put some pictures in here if I can find them. Beautiful body. I sold it to a local friend and uh, did the roof rack and the whole nine yards on it. And then I had, before that I had the D110 that we weathered pretty aggressively. It was one of my first things I did on the channel. And uh, <clears throat> great rigs. I got kind of burnt out with them. I had so many. I had the D90, D110, and the, <clears throat> excuse me, and the, the Land Cruiser. And uh, that's when I, about the time I, I started using those for parts to build rat rods. So about two months ago, I was sitting around. I was looking at something. I needed something new, just crawler or something fun to get out and drive. And uh, yeah, I almost bought the uh, RTR Jalan 2, the green body, the dark green body. And then right before I finally broke down and did it, I heard they were coming out with these. And I was like, that's perfect. I'll try out the new one. Get to see the new updated body. These are now officially licensed Land Rover. And they have opening doors and hoods and all kinds of goodies. Um, I really do love that green, the Heritage Edition. But everybody's got those out already, so we've got the Autobiography Edition. And um, I haven't seen that yet, so I'm curious to see what this body's all about. Um, I know the rear gate and everything opens on it. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing cut open and take a look. Alright, so... I was a little upset at first because I really love that green color on the truck and I never had the, the D90 pickup, but this finish on this actually looks fantastic. This is uh, far beyond colored plastic. So let's get all this stuff out of here. We've got our standard three channel RC four wheel drive ready to run controller. Um, not sure if everybody notices, I've got enough RTRs. These used to take eight batteries, and at some point in time they upgraded it to only take four. And that was a vast improvement, especially when you're like me and you're switching batteries around all the time from unit to unit. Alright, nothing there. You can always save this stuff, guys. This foam. You never know what seat cover, seat cushions, stuff you might come up with. Oh, uh, we got a big giant sticker sheet. Bunch of Land Rover, Camel Trophy, Defender. Uh, we do have some dash stickers, speakers, gauges, radio and air conditioning controls. Um, yeah, I've never, I never really put the stickers on stuff. What does it say? It may be slow, but it's 100% British. <laughs> Just tell my British friend that if he's watching Shane. <laughs> All right, let's see at the bottom here. We've got zip ties. Got a nice, that is another thing, if you're looking new to kits and stuff, RC Forger have, it has excellent instruction manuals, very clear, they actually rival to me as far as uh, usability. Got some extra 12mm hexes, not sure if we need to put those on or not. We've got rubber mirrors and the hard plastic mirrors, if you've seen any of the other reviews. Also we have our uh, little pin selector for our speed controller. And don't need silica gel. Alright, so we've got batteries for that controller, which came out of the package. <laughs> Save me some time. And we've got our standard 3000 nickel metal battery, 3000 milliamp. It's not bad. I used until the last year, I was using nickel metal on everything still. A little late to the LiPo game. game. And just a basic wall charger which probably takes quite a while to charge that battery, but eh. Charger would be the first thing you upgrade if this is your very first RC car. <laughs> All right, so let's get this thing out of this box. Oh man, all right. So, this actually looks really good. That finish on there, I'm digging it. 
All right, for the people that like to see this kind of stuff, go ahead and unwrap this bad boy. Look at that finish on this thing. Dude, that is nice. They really upped their game with the finishes. That C2X was really nicely finished. Two-tone, which is really, really nice. All right, guys, so we'll start on the back here. Um, this has an actual functioning latch. It's a little hard to get open at first. I don't have much fingernail left from work, so I'm going to have to cheat and use some pliers. <laughs> down open <laughs> so the interior is gloss black I do plan on changing the interior add some more details but it is different and more updated than the previous uh, defender bodies and it looks like the does the roof come off I think the roof comes off I'm gonna have to take it apart further and see not a whole lot going on back here we do have folding bucket seats in the rear <laughs> That's pretty cool. The, the older model had the side mounted seats. Um, I'm not sure these Heritage Editions, I'm not real familiar with the Land Rover models, so they may have done that on their later years. Uh, that's pretty cool. They actually do. They're actually hinged and fold down. So let's move around to the side. This thing's already getting dusty and dirty and it's driving me nuts. That's why I hate shiny vehicles. <laughs> so the hinge on these is just magnetic and yeah, we just have metal there, we have metal here, and it's right-hand drive. Not sure if you can see it. One of the cool things about this is it has the opening armrest lid as well, with a magnet to latch it shut. <laughs> do the front seats recline too? No, the front seats do not recline, which is fine. Um, I like the floor, it goes all the way down here to the rocker. There's a, a edge in here, so you're not going to get dirt and stuff in your interior as easily. And uh, lots of opportunities. We can add carpet to this. We can do a rubber floor thing. We're going to do all kinds of stuff with it. So <laughs> it just latches itself back. It's pretty slick. So the nice thing about this, but I'm not usually a big fan of opening doors. They're always kind of finicky. Um, like the Forerunner, you have to glue in the mount that the doors hinge on, and it's kind of precarious to get it to line up perfectly it takes a little bit of forethought and uh, these have external hinges just like the real Land Rover so that lends itself to fit a whole lot better plus these things are just big and boxy there's not quite as many complex curves as there are on the Forerunner uh, looking inside lots of legroom it does not have the stickers on the dash yet but it did come with them so that's good so when we take the dash out we can uh, dull it down and do some stuff to it, then put the stickers on. You got both shifters and everything. Let's take a look at the hood. One thing they've upgraded also on this body is all the lights. The lights just look way better. Um, I didn't even think about it on the back. The tail lights, the marker lights, they look... If you remember the old Land Rover body, they were just glue-in plastic pieces and you had to hollow them out and put LEDs in. And these are all made to receive LEDs. We'll take a look at that on the inside of the body when we remove it. But you can see the headlights here. They have a nice satin look inside. They have the uh, markings on the lens for refracting the light the right way. Really, uh, really updated in lots of ways. And the hood is just magnetic, and you can kind of grab underneath these edges here and pop it up. Oop, too far. Not a lot going on under there. See, it's just the standard R3. It's got a 45 turn motor and a twister high torque servo in there. And, uh, Lots of room for activities. <laughs> now you got a massive transmission tunnel carved out of the floorboard. So if you did want to run a scale transmission and motor in there, you'd have to rearrange your transfer case situation, but you'd have room for it. And you can see how just how glossy that finish is. Looks fantastic. So we've got lights, 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 and a reflector or marker light. I'm not sure if that takes an LED or not. Looks like it actually might. We'll be able to tell once we get inside of it better. I'm sure further down the line that we'll be offering this body set separately and as an unfinished builder's kit. Um, one major improvement, if you remember the old D90s and D110s, the windshield and the frame was all one piece glass. So you had to mask off the windshield and paint the surround to make it look scale. 
and it's not the case anymore. The windshield is a separate piece that looks like it snaps or glues in, and this is a molded separate part that is already in this body color. So, all right. So I've heard a lot of people complaining about removing the body. They've changed the body mounts on this. It used to just have these mounts here, and you put the screw straight through the body side. And yeah, that's that's easy. But you had this regular three mil screws on the outside. Now they have a smaller option, and there's a body pin thing and. I can see in the front here it'd be a little tricky getting it around the interior, but if I can find my needle nose pliers here, we'll make it look real easy. All right, <laughs> found them. Let's see how hard these backs will be real easy. I think if we turn the front ones around the other way, it won't be a problem at all. Lining them up may be a little tricky, but I don't think it'll be a big deal. Yeah, it's not that hard. Just got to turn it a little bit. I said that the last one's always a booger. All right, there we go. So it should. Uh oh, we have screws in the back. Oh, it snaps into the bumper. Let me show you that. It's got those little tabs hanging down that fit into the bumper right here and here and in the middle. There we go. All right, so I'll put the chassis aside. We'll take a closer look at the body on the underside. All right, so starting in the back, you can see we have a fully detailed bed floor that is molded into the tub itself. So this is the same body that's used on the pickup cab. It just has a different roof piece, and the roof is removable. And that is exciting because I want to take the roof off. <laughs> and you can see the back seats are all bolted down, so those are removable as well. Um, tail lights, even the little marker lights, all have bracketry to mount LEDs. I'm sure there'll be a LED kit along shortly for that. See how much room the interior actually gives you and you still have full floorboards. It's really nice. You got plenty of space in here for whether you run the stock battery that comes with it or you got you a big giant two cell stick in there. Um, up front, kind of scratch the body. <laughs> hate shiny stuff. It's so tedious. Up front we have real nice aluminum uh, brackets for all the lighting. LED mounts and the marker lights as well. Just all around up, really upgraded version. All right, so the chassis, basically the same. They've changed a few things. They uh, recently, I'm not sure if anybody's noticed, they've started stamping their logo on on the chassis rails and things like that. Um, we have those same emulsion, I think, shocks or those style of shocks. Um, we've got the new Outcry 2, which again looks very similar to the um, 1060s, the Hobby Wing Quick Runs. And, they and that ESC is two and three cell capable. Um, we've got the standard receiver in the box in the back. That's one nice thing when you buy one of these as a kit and you put it together. They they plan everything out as to where it goes, but your wires are never long enough, so you have to rewire. Your motor wires need to be lengthened. Your radio wire, your servo wire needs extension. But when you get the RTR version, everything's already the right length and it's it all jives nice. Um, Forty-five turn motor. I'm not sure what the other kits come with. I think the Trailfinder 2 come with a 35 turn. At least that's what I had in one of mine. And we've got the new Twister, the new version, a high torque servo, which not terrible servo at all. Um, the only upgrades I plan on doing to this, uh, for now we're going to run it box stock, nickel metal battery, just, just to test it out. Um, as we start moving forward, I, I will swap it over and start running some of my little three cells in it. I need to get the uh, connectors changed to a Dean connector and um, we'll go from there. Eventually we'll probably upgrade to a nice home hobby motor. Just have to see how the gearing is in it. Um, I know on the Trailfinder 2 is a 35 turn Torque Master Pro or something like that is always really good. Um, I'm assuming the same would be here since it is basically the same axle, same transmission, transfer case. And um, But yeah, well, I'm interested to see what the 45 turn feels like if it's if it's too slow or how it feels down low. Um, flip it over here. There's, like I said, it's the R3. It's standard, all their standard drivetrain. And one thing the Jalan 2s have always done, they've come with the Yoda 2 axles as opposed to the Yoda 1s. I believe now all the Trailfinder 2s, the kit versions, I think, come with the Yoda 2s. I know the Marlin does. <clears throat> um, it's just a better version of the same thing. There's really not any difference in the back other than the removable diff covers. But the, the front, the steering knuckles, 
the way the steering links and everything work is a little bit better you have a little bit better radius and it's just a little bit better design than the Yoda ones and um, remember on a couple of my Trailfinder 2's I've upgraded the fronts only to the Yoda 2 because the, the steering stuff needs a little improvement but the, uh, the rear is not a big deal but this is pretty nice looking stuff it's all four linked rear three linked front the pan hard bar pretty true to scale um, not really any differences we got this new body mounts and that's about it the bumpers look the same the front one might be a little bit different can't remember it's been a while since I've had one of these D90s and D110s we have the same uh, one nine steel beadlocks on the dirt grabber tires which I love the tread of because they look very strikingly similar to the BFG KO2s and stuff like that um, really don't know I had that problem before with my Land Rovers like what wheel really looks good on it and, and the, these rigs seem a little bigger than the Trailfinder 2 like the Trailfinder 2 the Mojave body really looks good with 155s 19s sometimes um, these I think really look better with the 19 but I bought some 19 of their Landys and the steel wheels and they just look too much so I put the 15s on there and then I could never get the tire size right on the 155 so I don't know but the proportions of this look really good like the pictures on the box and everything of these they look like they set up really tall and they, they don't the body sits nice and low and I think it's actually pretty proportionate so I guess the next step is to get our battery charged up get some batteries in the controller and take this thing out for a test spin. I got some of the batteries charging. I'm going to fill the shocks with oil. I just opened up the first one here. It's a little tricky to get into them. These are a newer updated version and the body is threaded all the way to the top. So getting the cap loose, it's a little bit of a fight, but um, yeah, they look improved. We'll see. Hopefully we don't have any leaks. Um, There's a very large diameter shock body. I don't want to take the whole thing off and show you, but it's a little bit beefier than they used to be so I've just got some old 30 weight shock oil um, hope that's enough to do all for and I'm gonna do all that off camera because that's boring and you don't want to watch me oil shocks up and we'll come back put it all back together all right batteries charged took about 30 minutes on my good charger um, got these straps put in here pretty basic stuff I feel like this this may be one of the most complete kits that we've gotten so far as far as scale detail the chassis is already pretty well pretty well rounded I feel like I did that wrong those are sticking out the bottom oh well <laughs> just temporary because I'll take one of these out and swap out to a lipo do a quick electronics test and we will throw the body back on so Let's go. All right, so real quick, the ESC, it does come with another one of these plugs. Um, you can set up your engine, or your brake, engine brake. It needs to work with diesels. Um, so we have it in nickel metal, this one, and you can move it over two holes for LiPo. And then you have uh, forward reverse with no plug, forward brake with it to the right, forward brake reverse to the left. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll just put that in. That's in a separate bag in the instruction packet. Now the moment everyone's been waiting to see, putting the body back on. So I'm going to do it like this. We'll get these three lined up on the bumper. And we'll kind of pull those down if I remember right from my other ones. They just kind of snap in. And flip it on its side here and see what's going on. Uh, <laughs> All right, what's going on? All right, so it looks like it's easiest to do this upside down. Just line up the three tabs on the back, and it was catching on the uh, battery connector between the floor and top of the battery, so I had to kind of put that out of the way. Won't be as big an issue once we switch to uh, Dean's connectors, the T-style. So this is the part everybody says is so hard. So let's see. All right, one's in. I had more trouble with the battery than this. <laughs> Every time I say something, it gets harder. I need a little bit different plier for this, but as much grip on there as we can. Still not working. That's a little tricky, but it's not 
Not a deal breaker. I think people are just trying to find something wrong with the kit. It's really a pretty solid kit. And uh, if you've had Trailfinder 2s for time, you know that the screws on the outside of the body, in and out, in and out, pulling the body, lifting up on it, eventually it stretches out. My red Hilux is like that, and it's got to the point now I can't use my little quick release uh, rod ends. I have to go back to a screw because the body's so stretched out. Easy peasy. So it's good that they're looking at alternate ways. I like this better than say like the Blazer had a plastic add-on and the Forerunner had the plastic add-ons to the stock body mounts. This is all metal and albeit precise, it's not that hard. Boom, we're in. So let me find the on switch. Got my provided batteries in the radio. I guess I should have looked where the on off switch was before I put it back on. Here it is. All right, we are live. Got oil on the shocks. All right, so one last thing here. I almost forgot about it. We have mirrors to put on. And it does come with hard plastic mirrors and rubber mirrors. And it has reflective for both and hardware. So let me look at how those attach. They attach to the actual door hinge itself. So uh, let me figure that out. All right, guys, I got one on. That was entirely way too difficult. Hardest part of the whole kit. The secret is with these to screw the screw in. This is a very hard plastic on these hard mirrors. Go ahead and run the screw in, kind of tap it, and then that'll make it a lot easier. And you're not fighting with the door, fighting with the mirror, not having quite as hard a time. Um, big issue is getting a wrench in there or a thing. So using a regular Allen screw, which is not much leverage at all, but got one on, we can get the other. Now that's pre-tapped, at least we can get it started. There it goes. Yeah, that's the key. Stuck the uh, mirror on it. It does come with mirrors for the rear view mirror as well. We'll look at that once we take the interior apart for more detail. Nice and snug. All right, guys, so that's the new Jalan 2, Galanda 2 from RC 4 Wheel Drive. Um, sorry I didn't get much of a drive in this video. I really don't have anywhere to crawl anymore. My little crawl area is completely overgrown and kind of a mess, so didn't really get to do much but put around the yard. So hoping tomorrow I can, I've got to go out and visit some family and hopefully I can find me a nice little spot to crawl and get y'all a better video on it. <clears throat> Overall, I'm digging it. It's a much improved version of a pretty good truck to start with. The chassis and stuff's solid. I mean, there's not any major changes to the drivetrain. Um, it does feel the 45 turns a little sluggish for me, but that's just my personal flavor. Um, it may just be the uh, nickel metal battery. Doesn't have a whole lot of get up and go, but um, that's an easy fix. Like I said, the ESC that comes with it is lipo capable, so it won't take much to swap it over. Just change the connectors out and uh, move the little plug and you're good to go. 
but um yeah i'm digging it the body looks fantastic the updates to it are spot on it's what we needed um these retail new for 4.99 just about everywhere <clears throat> you can find it with free shipping a lot of places and um pretty good all-around truck and of course like everything rc four wheel drive there's going to be a long line of accessories you can deck yours out customize it i'm sure eventually the the single cab truck roof will be available to swap onto this if you want to you can change the interior and of course all of rc four wheel drives tires and wheels different mix and match combos it's almost uh almost limitless as to what you can do with it but uh, i'm digging it i like the way it drives i did a little crawling off camera just playing in my overgrown mess and uh it's pretty stable despite how tall it is um i think the 30 weight oil in the shocks is a good fit and of course i did make a mess with those <laughs> i overfilled the first two and <clears throat> made a little bit of a mess with it but they seem they feel a lot better than the old ones did they uh the spring rates and stuff are different and it feels pretty stable i mean it's not uh you see how quickly it stopped bouncing but yeah that's definitely something you have to do i know you know if you're just getting into this and you get this out of the box and you just throw a battery in it and go it's going to bounce around like a like a wagon <laughs> so you definitely need to put oil in the shocks makes a makes it a totally different animal but um yeah if you guys are interested in these check them out i'll put a link below <clears throat> and um, yeah, keep it scale. I'll see y'all in the next one.